Evet değerli e, dinleyiciler, e, bugün e, bugün konuğumuz e, Erdoğan Şipoli. Erdoğan Şipoli aslen e, kendisi e, Kosovalı. E, Üniversite eğitimini Fatih Üniversitesi'nde yaptıktan sonra e, bir süre e, Balkan Federasyonu'nda çalıştı Amerika'da. Daha sonra e, şu anda Georgetown Üniversitesi'nde Visiting Scholar olarak çalışmakta. Aynı zamanda ekranda görmüş olduğunuz Washington Institute for Leadership adlı kurumda da e, yönetici olarak çalışıyor. Genellikle e, leadership üzerine programları oluyor. E, şimdi kendisini e, mikro Telefona davet ediyoruz. Erdoğan abi buyurun. E, merhabalar. Ekrem abi teşekkür ederim. Duyuyoruz. Bu, e, e, duyuyor musunuz? Evet duyuyoruz. Tamam. E, peki görüyor musunuz beni? Duyuyoruz abi problem yok. Peki görüyor musunuz? Peki. Görüyor musunuz beni? Evet görüyoruz. Kameradan. Duyuyoruz abi. Problem yok. Süper. Süper. Aa, bunu şöyle yapayım. Aa, şimdi ben teşekkür ederim. Ekranımızı görsek ee, daha iyi abi. Şimdi onu, onu da paylaşacağım abi. Bunu da paylaşacağım. Sadece ben ilk başta hani, e, ben biraz konuşayım dedim. Kendimi biraz e, bir görsünler ondan sonra e, arkadaşlar sonra ekranına paylaşacağım. Evet. Teşekkür ederim çok beni buraya davet ettiğiniz için. Umarım size bir yarım saat içerisinde, yarım saat 40 dakika içerisinde bu global citizenship ile ilgili konuşacağım. Ondan sonra sorularınızı da alacağız. Aynı zamanda chatte de yazabilirsiniz. Ben oraya da kontrol edeceğim. Şimdi şöyle... Evet. Şimdi benim benim adım Erdoğan e, Şipoli ve e, dur. Evet. evet. E, bu konferansı veya e, işte bu online e, workshop neyse e, Washington Institute for Leadership e, Adına hani ben onun CEO'su olarak e, yapmak istiyorum. Yani sizin karşınızdayım. E, il, e, i̇l başta şunu söylemek zorundayım. E, Türkiye'den dolayı e, şimdiden özür diliyorum. E, ben Kosovalıyım, Arnavut'um. Türkçe'yi daha sonra öğrendim. İşte e, Fatih Üniversitesi'ne e, gittikten sonra e, Türkiye'de öğrendim. Şimdiden özür diliyorum. But keep up with me. E, bana dediler Türkçe yaparsanız daha iyi olur. Ben de e, Türkçe yapmaya çalışacağım. Uh, ama bazen de İngilizceyi karıştırır, karıştırırsam uh, dediğim gibi kusura bakmayın lütfen. Uh, şimdi ben kimim? Uh, dediğim gibi ben Erdoğan Şipoli. Uh, Uluslararası ilişkiler ve siyaset biliminde uh, doktora yaptım. Şu anda Georgetown Üniversitesi'nde, Washington DC'de um, research uh, bir pozisyonum var. Uh, uh, akademik çalışmalarım oradan yürütüyorum. Ama aynı zamanda uh, ben hayat boyunca sadece doktoramla veya akademik çalışmalarımla ilgilenmek, uğraşmak istemedim. Sürekli yeni şeyler yapmak istedim. O yüzden birkaç tane organizasyonu kurdum. Onların arasında işte daha sonra konuşacağım İstanbul Liderlik Enstitüsü var, işte Washington Institute for Leadership, NAPAC bazı organizasyonlar var. Hepsi yani böyle leadership Dialog, Conflict Resolution veya Professional, uh, professional Development uh, üzerinde kurulu. Ki ben siyaset bilimde de, uluslararası ilişkilerde de aynı şeyleri okudum. Ama ben istedim ki okuduklarımızı uh, aynı zamanda böyle uh, dünyada bir, bir pratik, pratikte uh, dökelim diye. Um, şimdi ben koçluk da yapıyorum. Bu daha çok benim for profit işim. Executive presence, negotiation skills, advocacy, konuşma, hitabet, storytelling, bu hikaye ile ilgili de koçluk yapıyorum. Şirket sahiplerine, kendini geliştirmek isteyen profesyonellere bu hizmeti veriyorum. Bu tamamen for profit benim. 
e, yaşamımı sürdürmek için ben bunu iş olarak yaptığım şey. Aynı zamanda da iki tane kitap e, yazdım. E, bir tanesi International Securitization, The Case of Kosovo. E, bu bizim e, ben Kosovalı olduğum için işte orada NATO'nun müdahalesi nasıl oldu, ne oldu, ne bitti. Bir de yeni çıkan 2018'de e, Islam Securitization in U.S. Foreign Policy. Bu benim doktoradan e, deşirdiğim e, kitap. Bu Amerika'dan e, ve işte Avrupa'dan e, ses getirdiği, biraz daha ses getirdiği bir, e, bir kitap. E, beni hayal boyunca akademide e, konuşma üzerinde okudum. İşte e, siyasette konuşma ne kadar önemli. E, ondan sonra mindset, yani düşünceyi değiştirmek, onu construct etmek, e, build etmek ne kadar önemli olduğunu bu tür şeyleri e, okudum. Kitabımda ona göre. Dediğim gibi İstanbul Liderlik Enstitüsü diye bir enstitütü kurdum e, benim öğrenci yıllarımda. İstanbul'da. Başarılı bir e, kurumdu. Ondan sonra Avrupa'nın ilk lobicilik okulunu e, yaptık. E, ondan sonra Amerika'da North American Professionals and Entrepreneurs Council'u kurduk. Burada farklı e, background'tan e, 50 üniversiteden daha fazla e, insanlar gelip e, işte investment için startupları e, çağırdık. Güzel şeyler oldu. Bütün bunları ben size verebilirim. E, mail atarsanız info at we leadership nokta organ mail atarsanız ben e, bu akşam mail atan herkese e, bu e, hem kendim için hem de e, konuşacağım e, bu global citizenship ile ilgili e, sunumu size gönderebilirim. Ondan sonra e, ben Amerika'da Federation of Balkan American Associations için çal, e, çalıştım. E, burada çok Balkan Amerikalı var. Bilmiyorum aramızda şu anda Balkan Amerikalı var mı ama e, Balkan Amerikalılar iyi insanlar. E, o yüzden e, yani e, orada e, çalıştım. E, programlar yaptım. Hala orada çalışıyorum. E, böyle. Şimdi diyeceksiniz ki Erdoğan niye bunları anlatıyor? E tabi Siyasen bilinci olarak hava atmak, <gülüyor> nedeni hava atmak olabilir tabii. Ee, ama sadece o değil. Ee, anlat, e, şunu için de e, anlatmak istiyorum. Ee, ben kendim kendimden çok gurur duyuyorum yaptığım bazı şeylerden. Ee, aynı zamanda e, hani bunu söylüyorum ve bunu insanlarla paylaşmak istiyorum yaptığımız güzel şeylerden. Fakat hiçbirisi tek başına yapılmıyor. Bu bir grupla yapılıyor. E yanında insanlar varsa bu yapılıyor. Yoksa inanın para bile o kadar para olsa eğer insanlar yanında yoksa bu tür şeyler yapılmıyor. Ben çok e, şanslıyım ki her zaman yanımda çok çok e, değerli insanlar vardı. Eşimden tut, değerli eşimden e, tutun. E, arkadaşlar e, ondan sonra tanıdığım diğer e, sosyal girişimciler vesaire vesaire. Şimdi size bir soru sormak istiyorum aslında ben. Sorum da şu. Sorum da şu. Bunu görüyorsunuz. Bu, bu resmi görüyorsunuz. Bu konuda ne düşünüyorsunuz? Bir, yani size birkaç yani size şey söyleyeyim, size bir zaman vereyim. Five minutes after your birth, they decide your name, nationality and religion. You spend the rest of your life defending something you didn't even choose. Bunun niye bunu niye seçtim? Şunun için biz konuşurken Ekrem abiyle Ekrem abiyle hani dedi ki biz nedir bizim en büyük problemimiz? Şu anda gençlerin yaşadığı problemler. İşte Türkiye'den buraya gelen insanlar. Nedir? Bu bu konu hakkında bir şey söylemek isteyen var mı chat'te? Neyse bir şeyiniz varsa Lütfen yazın, ben oradan okuyacağım. Şimdi 
Çoğu arkadaşlar bir soru ile boğuşuyorlar. O da şu, hani ben Amerika'dayım, Amerikalı mıyım, Müslüman mıyım, ondan sonra Türk müyüm? Amerikalı olursam Amerikan yaptığı her şeyi savunmak zorunda mıyım? Müslümanların her şeyi, her şeyi savunmak benim üstümde mi? Veya Türkiye'yi nasıl anlatacağım? Türkiye'de her şeyi savunmak benim üstümde mi? Tamam mı? Bazı şeyler biz biz seçmiyoruz. Yani bazen kader bunu seçiyor. Ama aynı zamanda bizim için seçilen o şeyler bizim için bize verilen bazı labor'lar, label'lar onlara biz hayat boyunca savunmaya zorunda mıyız? Ben 2000, 1999'da mülteciydim. I was a refugee. Kosova Savaşı zamanında İngiltere'ye gittim. O zamana kadar tabii ki yani Arnavut olmak, Arnavut şöyle keser, biçer, şunu yapar, bunu eder. Fakat ben gördüm ki İngiltere'ye gittiğimde mülteci olarak insanlar benimle çok iyi davrandılar. Arkadaşlar benimle ders çalıştılar. O zaman dedim ki bu nedir dedim. Hani kendime bir bir yolda, bir journey'de buldum. Neyse bu sorularım kafanızda varken ben başka bir şey sizinle paylaşmak istedim. Somebody is asking if I can speak in English. Yes, of course, that would be even easier for me. But it's just that, you know, they told me that uh, I should speak in Turkish. Otherwise, yeah, I can do it. So I don't know. Ekrem, uh, abi? Oh, yes, of course. You can ask questions in English. Okay. Oh, English would be much easier for me. So let's do that. And then you can ask me questions in um, you can ask me questions in Turkish as well. You can ask me questions in yeah, well, Turkish, English, and then if if you know maybe like if you want to ask me questions in Bulgarian or Albanian, I'll be happy to answer. But yeah. So basically what I was saying is five minutes after your birth, they decide your name, uh, nationality and religion. You spend the rest of your life defending something you didn't even choose. That was our main question. So we are giving us something. Now we are asking ourselves, am I Turkish? Am I Albanian? Am I American? What, you know, what am I? What does this mean? And that is one of the most important um, questions that we are going to talk about today. Maybe how to be a global citizen. That, that was the question I was asking in 1999 when I was a refugee in England. And then I went, you know, I was this Albanian guy who is strong and Albanians are can, this and that. Uh, But, well, yes, of course. You can ask questions in English. So um, then why am, I, why am I talking about all of this? Well, To be able to be a global citizen or to understand others, to be able to work with others better, we need, we need some of the most important values that we can gain. And then we need to measure those values with whatever is on us. If we have those values, then we can say, okay, do this. If let's say being an American requires me 
um, or fits with these values, then I'm an American. But if it doesn't fit, then where do I stand? It's the same with like being Turkish, being a Muslim, being a female, male, and all of those kind of things. First of all, we need if we want to be global citizens, because we never know where life leads us. So if we want to be global citizens, we need to be exposed to different cultures. That is the most important thing that we have an, uh, as an opportunity here in America or in many other places. The first time I met an African American, uh, I met uh, the first time I met uh, like a black person was when I was a refugee in England. Why? Because in Kosovo, I never met someone who is not white. So exposing ourselves to different people, to different cultures, this helps us understand people and see how we can build upon our values instead of just, um, um, instead of just uh, defending something that we thought was right. The second thing is, after learning and researching more, build your own identity. I'm a big fan of asking people to rebuild their identity and everything they believe, anything that they believe they are. Is that true? Being, what does being Turkish mean? What does being American mean? What does being uh, Albanian mean? What does being a Muslim mean? Do I want to, to be recognized by what do they mean? That is how I build my identity. And none of them are exclusive to each other. I hear a lot of people telling me, hey, Erdogan, um, Am I a Muslim or am I an American? Well, that is one of the good things that you can be, you can be both, you can be a Muslim, you can be an American. I'm an Albanian and I'm trying to be an American. I don't have a citizenship yet. That's another story. But I, for once, feel myself more bounded to the American culture than necessarily bounded to my, um, uh, than necessarily bounded to my uh, Albanian culture. And mind I say that the Albanian culture is very, very strong, very predominant. The third thing that I want you to, to, to know or that I want you to think about is adaptation. Life is not black and white. Life is what happens to you while you are making plans. Basically, we plan something and then life happens. We plan, I was planning to be an academic, be a professor in Turkey, and then I got a job offer, so I came to live in America. I planned this, this um, uh, month, I, I had other plans. Now I am stuck at home because there is a virus going on globally. It's very funny because um, as Kosovars, we don't have the right to travel in Europe. All other, <coughs> or all other um, countries in Kosovo have, uh, in, I'm sorry, in, in the Balkans, have the right to travel to Europe, but the Kosovars. Whereas now with the coronavirus, nobody's traveling to Europe. Everybody's stuck at home. So basically what I want to say is adapt. If you are someone that came from Turkey here, this is your new reality. You have to adapt uh, where you are and try to get the best of it. The best thing, the best way to adapt is by networking and knowing more people. You don't, I mean, now, of course, we all say stay home because there's some coronavirus, but Actually, in real life, after this virus is done, you don't have to stay in one place. You don't have to stick up to one community. You don't have to stick up to one particular area. Network, because that is how you learn from more people. And also, 
build teams. As I said, I feel proud of the things that I've done in my life, but I, have, I, would, I wouldn't have been able to do anything if it was not for the teams that I've built. So the one thing that I feel myself very proud is that I had great people around me that I had the abil ability to work together with those teams, right? These are all things that we face during this thing about being a global citizen. So the idea of this was global citizen, olmak ve olmamak, be or not to be. I'm a big, as you can understand, uh, I'm a big um, supporter of being a global citizen because for me, nationality does not make any sense. For me, race does not make any sense. For me, religion, what kind of religious belief you have, doesn't make any sense. The reason why I am a Muslim is because I believe that Islam is what I best identify with. And the values that I have and that Islam uh, supports or promotes are these values that I want to be bounded with. There are very good values in America. I want to be those bounded to those values. There are values that I don't support. I don't want to be responsible for those values. It's the same with being an Albanian and stuff like that. Well, I've lived in Turkey. I lived in England. I lived in Kosovo. I lived in America. I lived a little bit, my wife is Bulgarian. So I'm trying to be as, as big a global citizen as possible. How did I do this? I did this by being exposed to different cultures, building my own identity, adopting to where I am, networking and building teams. So what have I learned through this time? I've learned that in your life, you have to try new things and take risks. Go out of your comfort zone. Never be satisfied with what you have. You try new things and, you, and then you take risks. But you have to take calculated risks. Not just, oh, just because I'm taking risks, then let me do this. At the same time, be open-minded and respectful. I, I see a lot of people carrying the baggage of their identity. If somebody says something about Albanians, oh, no, Albanians are good, blah, blah, blah, blah, blah, blah. If somebody says something about Turkey, no, Asunda, Turk, blah, blah, blah. Wait a minute. Be open-minded. Listen to them. If you listen, you have an opportunity to learn something. If you only speak, you're only repeating what you already know. And remember one thing. In your life, the most important value that it's like you're better than your identity, better your, than your other thing, is res being respectful. You have the right, everyone to respect you. And you have the obligation that you respect everyone. Another thing that I've learned is that you should not be afraid of failing. Don't be afraid to fall. In fact, if you fall once, stand up, go towards your goals. If you, fall, if you fall again, again, stand up. Third time, be sure to fall better. So your goal should not be, I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to fail. If I'm going to fail, at least I'll fail better than the previous time. To be able, in this life, what do we have but learning new things? So you should love learning and you should always learn. You should always learn from everyone around you. you if you're not learning from your children, you are missing something. If you're not learning from your parents, you are missing something. If you're not learning from your friends, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your brother, your sister, then you are missing something big. You know why? Because you are the average of five. What do I mean with you are the average of five? You are the average of five people that you spend most of your time uh, with. Let me give you one minute 
you write the five people that you spent most of your time with. Write it in, in a net, in, in a notebook. Don't write it in Twitter, in, in not in Twitter, in, in in chat. Write it in a notebook or whatever you want. Just write five people that you spent most of your time with. You are not the best of those five people. You are the average of those five people. If you are not learning anything from those five people that you spend most of your time with, then you are losing you, your time with the wrong people. If you spend your time with your father, your mother, your siblings, your children, you should learn something from them. And you can learn things from everyone, just that you have to be open to learning new things. I love spending time with my wife because I learn uh, because I learn most of the things from my wife. I love watching TVs from her. The way how she approaches a movie, the way how she reads a book, she keeps me going. So she is one of the people that I spend most of your, my, my time with. Another is I always have mentors. I always have mentors. So I try to spend as much time as, as I can with my mentor so I can learn from them, etc., etc. So there is a question here that says, does the same thing apply to characters from shows? Yes. You, I'm going to talk more about those things. But I, I'm trying to develop this theory, which is called the average of five. So you are also... You are also uh, the average of the five places that you spent most of your time at. If it is your home, your work, your school, make sure that you learn from those five places. Because that is, most probably, those places are the ones where you're going to end up. If you want to, if you want to, end up, let's say, working in the United Nations. Well, I always tell to my mentees and my students, you should go, you wanna have a coffee, instead of going in a coffee shop in New York, go to United Nations or near to United Nations, that is where you drink your coffee. You wanna find yourself at Harvard? Go and visit Harvard. You, you live in DC, you wanna study at uh, Georgetown University? Go and drink your coffee at Georgetown University. Because that is what is going to motivate you. That is what is going to give you the vision, this is where I want to see myself. And at the same time, you have to learn from those places. I love spending time at home because I have the, my working station. I have my everything that helps me do my work at home. So home is the, one of the places that I spend my time with. But I make sure that that time I spend at home is useful. I want to spend time in, in New York. I, I want to end up going to, New, to living in New York. I make sure that every time I go past New York, I need to go, let's say, to travel to Boston or New Jersey for meetings. I go to New York and I see there, I, I get motivated. I want to work at the World Bank. I go to the World Bank. Before I started at Georgetown University, that is where I was, when I was coming to, to DC from Istanbul for like 10 years, we were coming, bringing different, with Istanbul Leadership Institute, we were bringing different groups. They were telling us, where do you stay when you go there? We said, like, oh, we stay at Georgetown. I was like, why? It's expensive. Yeah, it is expensive, but that is where I want these students to go. That is where I want these students to get motivated. They were telling us, oh, what about when you go to New York? Where do you stay? In Manhattan? Oh, why? You know, there are cheaper hotels in New Jersey. Yes, they are. But I want these students to live in Manhattan to see what it is to be motivated by that. At the same time, you are the average of five books that you read. Because books have characters. Books are going to make, that is your consumption. You have your production, which is like speaking or producing something, writing. And then you have 
your consumption, which is books that you, uh, that you read. Those characters, those supernatural characters or those, whoever it is, Prophet Muhammad, Jesus, Spider-Man, Superman, those are the characters that are going to, uh, to motivate you. I mean, don't misunderstand me. The book that I love to read are Mario Puzo. Mario Puzo is the writer that has, uh, the, uh, that has written uh, The Godfather. So, I mean, those characters did not make me a mafia, and hopefully it won't. But I love to read about uh, how New York was in 1950s. I love to read about Italy of 1920s. Videos. What kind of videos? I'm sure that a lot of you watch YouTube videos. What do you watch in YouTube? I'm not saying don't watch YouTube. I'm not your father and mother saying, oh, why do you spend so much time in YouTube? No, spend more time in YouTube. But make sure that those videos that you are watching teach you something. For example, I'm at home now. What I'm doing, I'm a political scientist. What I'm doing right now is I'm taking an online class on neuroscience. Why? Because I want to know how my brain works. Doesn't have to do anything with political science, but because that one motivates me to know how the brain of people works. All right. Somebody, Fatih Dalar says, uh, I watch Minecraft. Well, you know, if that is what motivates you or helps you or teaches you something, that's good. Um, Okay, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop, stop looking to the chat. All right, uh, and then also music. Music has this thing that it does to your, um, to your brain, and that is it motivates you. Whenever I have a speech, I have my own playlist that I listen. A lot of that has hip hop, but some of that has, um, let's say, jazz. Some of that has uh, house music. I love house music. And I have my own hip hop. Um, I have my own hip hop uh, songs that motivate me. I love Jay Z, for example. Why? Because he's a he. His songs are smart. He is a smart businessman. He has uh, a beautiful family, a very beautiful wife, which I also do. So I just see myself as as uh, as someone like him in, in that. Um, so what I want to say is that. You are the average of whatever you consume. The people you spend your time with, the places that you spend your time at. If you are not learning from those people and from those places, then you are on the right, on the wrong place with the wrong people. You are spending your life on the wrong place with the wrong people. And then also what books that you read, videos that you watch, music, everything. Now. What about uh, also you are the average of five values that you hold dear. What are those values? Remember guys, all these things are interchangeably. We are not rocks that we decide on something and then we have, uh, and then we have um, to stick by it. This is what I meant with the first picture where I said that they decide you on something that you have to defend it. I don't. I love my father and my mother. They've decided who I am and stuff like that. But I reevaluated everything and I decided to be Erdogan and who I am today. So who are these values? What are these values? For me, it's justice. For me, is personal development. For me, is motivation, motivating other people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At the same time, you are you are the five issues that you fight about or that are important to you. This is why: don't be stuck with problems that are not that important because they are going to drain.
That's a hobby. I do that with my wife. We relax. We have that music vibe. That's great for me. I love swimming. These are the, that is what makes me. The hobbies are what make me. I have some experience. But if there are three things that are and I this all around the world, you should have a purpose. From now on, decide and try to find a purpose. Because people are driven by purpose. I'm sorry. That is the difference between being motivated in life and being depressed. But that's not enough. On that purpose, try to decide on a cause. And try to work for that cause. Remember I said the issues. And finally, smart work. So purpose, cause, and then finally, smart work. What does smart work mean? That is, for example, what one of my differences, one of my failures. I was always a hard worker. I worked 16 hours a day. I traveled. I did this. I didn't spend time a lot with my family. But that's not what I should have done. Now, I have learned better. That is smart work. Work, don't just work to get busy. Work on things that matter, which is work on that cause. I have to say this in Turkish. Üç şey öğrendim bu hayattan ben bugüne kadar. Yani çok yaşlı sayılmam, sayılmam ama biraz kelim görünüyor. Bir, gayen olacak. Gayen olan ve olmayan ins- insanlar ikiye ayrılır. Gayesi olan ve olmayan. O gaye giden bir davan olacak. O dava olunca sen kendini iyi hissedip ve kendini bir işe yaradığını hissediyorsun. Ve aynı zamanda o gaye yolunda, o dava yolunda çalışman lazım, aktif olman lazım. Yani sadece hard work, çok çalışmaktan bahsetmiyorum. Smart work, akıllı çalışman lazım. On this purpose... We came together with some other people and we decided to form Washington Institute for Leadership, a registered 501c3 organization here in Washington, D.C. We wanted to establish a platform that will bring together emerging leaders, people like yourselves, youngsters, and established leaders who have a purpose of mentoring people, whose cause is to increase the leadership platform and who want to work on this cause. We want to uncover the potential of people from different uh, communities and establish a network of leaders that will share the know-how, experience, and everything. These are some of the people that we work together, but there are tens of other people that, um, that we are together with. So I told you guys, you know, I, I love my wife the most, the, the prettiest person in the world and stuff like that. She's Denitza. She is the one that has me become what I am today. Some of the programs that we do are leadership programs. So we train people on leadership skills, on soft skills and stuff like that. 
we also do purpose for learning. We're trying to uh, we're trying uh, to help people, especially youngsters, find their pur purpose and learn according to their purpose. So we are not a leadership educational organization that is traditional with schools and stuff like that. We want to be more specific. We want to be more active based. Another thing that we have is a career fun, a three day boot camp for university students to help them career in career counseling, internships, fellowships, and mentorships. And we do this at Georgetown University. So Georgetown University is, uh, is, is very kind to give us the space and uh, help us do this. Then uh, we, are, we are doing other programs, such as Leadership Academy, where we're, trying, we're, we're bringing people from different grounds, from everywhere in America and in, in, uh, in the world, and then train them on leadership skills, on networking and stuff like that. And we do that internationally as well and nationally. And now we're doing something called leadership clubs, where we are establishing leadership clubs at different universities inside America. And then together with them, we're trying to go down to people who need these. Because places like Washington, D.C., like New York, like San Francisco, they are very competitive. And we want that everyone to have the ability to compete in this market, to compete, even though they come from refugee backgrounds, even though they come from uh, different communities, uh, underserved communities. We, together with generals, uh, uh, ambassadors, professionals in different fields, we came together to make this platform so we have people develop themselves and then be competitive despite their uh, background, all right? So this is me. Uh, I'm Erdogan Shipoli. You can find me in all these kind of places. And uh, I will be very happy to send you this, um, to send you this, um, this, presentation, if you send an email at info at weleadership.org, uh, I'll send everyone this. Also, I want to be, uh, I want to be able to, uh, to be able to, to stay in touch with you. So email me, email me, uh, email well, and then hopefully you found this uh, helpful. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Anyone? Erdoğan abi, teşekkür ederiz. Abi. Ben size teşekkür ediyorum. Abi. Will we have more where to win? Look, what do you think are some advantages of nationalism, if there are any? Well, Ömer Manga. Well, Ömer. Özür dilerim, Ekrem Bey. Siz şey kestim ama. Yo, buyurun, buyurun. Devam edin lütfen. Soru cevap kısmına geçtik zaten. Evet. Um, what do you think are some advantages of nationalism, if there are any? Um, I have studied nationalism very deeply and I nationalism does not have any advantage. Nationalism for me is a virus in somebody's uh, brain. Why? Because I think there are uh, there are differences between nationalism and patriotism. Patriotism is loving your country, loving your nation. More importantly, working for the betterment, for the improvement of your country and of your nation. That is, there is nothing wrong with this thing, and I believe that that is noble. But nationalism, on the other hand, as we understand it, is thinking that your nation or country is above others, which I think is separatist, but I think it, it's only uh, in the brain, uh, I mean, it. It's a virus in the brain because no nation or no country is above the other. So I always say, be, be patriot. But 
nationalism is what what kills. Nationalism is why we have so many nation, national conflicts. Uh, no, ethnic conflicts. I'm sorry. No, there there was a professor that defines defined it best, and he said, "Look, nation, nation, nationalism makes you die for it and kill for it." So people kill for nationalism. I want to do this. I want for my nation. We are bigger and stuff like that. Or I can die for my nation. Whereas me, no. I live for my nation. I live for my people. This is why I'll go and I study anywhere in the world and try to help my, help my people. Because I believe that my people need that help. So the difference is, for patriotism, you live for your nation. In nationalism, you die and kill for your nation. Where is this going to be the leadership? So I'm going, I'm going to, uh, everybody who sends me emails, so this way I, I also have your emails, and then I can send you more information where we have, um, when we have programs. But anyway, if you see here, there is www.weleadership.org. So that is where, uh, where you can find all our programs, and we will be happy to work with you if you have your own groups that, you want to work with. So for example, if you have a group of people that you think uh, you want to do something at your, at your university or something, oh, please let us know. We'll be very happy uh, to work with you, organize uh, leadership programs and stuff like that. I've got a question, Abilaziz. Okay, most probably. So what do you think is the most important thing when in a leadership position? The most important thing in a leadership position when you are in a leadership position, I think one of the most important things is to be able to be a good leader, I think you should have empathy. What is the difference between empathy and sympathy? Sympathy is feeling for someone. If somebody tells you, oh, I feel bad, you say, oh, okay, I understand you. That is sympathy. You don't judge. Empathy is trying to put, you, put yourself in someone's shoes. So if I'm in a leadership position and I have someone working for me, I, if I'm going to tell them something, I have to think, wait a minute, how would I feel if somebody told me that, if, if my boss would tell me that? I think empathy is one of the traits. But if you're, in, if you're asking one of the traits of leadership that makes you a better leader, I always say is communication skills. What is communication skills? Communication skills is first and foremost, First and foremost, listening. That is communication. Listening. I have a whole other um, workshop on communication skills, and I always start with listening. The second thing is uh, being good storytellers, which means knowing how to construct everything that you want to say in communication as a story, because stories tap to our emotions. And third out of that is public speaking which is still in communication. Uh, Rana has that. I hope I, I, um, I answered your question. What are the key characters of leaders? Oh, so again, so somebody asked a similar thing. What are key characters of leaders? So if you're, so basically empathy, good communication skills. For me, I also think it's uh, executive presence, to be present, to know how to look, to know how to sound, and to act as a leader, which is, there is a difference between acting as a boss or acting as a leader. Uh, negotiation skills, conflict resolution, because we always have to deal with conflict. So we know how, we have, must know how to resolve the conflicts, not just keep them in, in, in one side. As I said, negotiation skills and and other traits, such as uh, well, public speaking, such as, uh, what else? Res to be respectful, etc., etc. What challenges do you face while networking, such as prejudice, close-minded people, and how you deal with them? Well, those are stuff that, that you learn, for example, if, if you learn about negotiation skills or conflict res resolution, you deal with that. Well, thank you very much for that question, and let me very uh, shortly explaining. Networking is a science in itself. In networking, the rule of fail, stand up, do it again, fail, stand up, fail again, but fail better applies. So 
you have to do as much networking as possible to be able to get good at it. How do you deal with prejudices and closed-minded people? You have to show them what does an open-minded person help. If somebody is closed-minded and you are closed-minded, then you are not going to educate anyone anything. But if you are open-minded and you show this with your presence, with your smart opinions, educated opinions, then that prejudice is, is, is, is going to fail. One of the traits of leadership is being a good dialogue, knowing dialogue. Meaning there is a difference between monologue is only speaking and trying to sell yourself or propaganda and dialogue, which means learning from others. Not only letting others speak, because a lot of people, they say, oh, I'm, I'm, a good, I'm good in dialogue. I listen to others. Yes, but a lot of people listen to others so in their mind they are thinking how to reply instead of what they are learning from them. People that know good dialogue, that are good at dialogue, also learn from other people. So in networking, that is also what we show. We show that we are there with people. We show that we are, um, that uh, we listen to them, that we learn something from them, and that we also teach them something. What about in the world we need leadership or what? As we see leaders in the world. Of course we need leadership, but we need people to be smart leaders, better leaders than we have right now. Are we going to be satisfied with leadership? No, but we should be the ones that see the flaws and then try to become better. We need more leadership. We need leadership at home, leadership in the neighborhood. We need leadership in the community that we live in, leadership in the country that we live in. But we need leaders that are driven by forming teams, people, being together with people, leaders that have a purpose and have a cause that will serve the humanity, that will be there for people. Because somebody ha that has a purpose of enriching themselves and a cause to become more richer, that is not, I mean, we have many of those leaders that we are not talking about. But if you and me don't engage to increase this servant leadership, then other people are going to do it. How to apply for United Nations in the upstate New York? Where to start? How to volunteer? Go and take a coffee. Go and have your coffee at uh, uh, United Nations building. Have a LinkedIn profile. In Twitter, follow people that work in the United Nations. Try to get an internship there. Talk to more people that have been there. Or come to our events. We have people that do those kinds of things in the United Nations. How do you learn Turkish English, other languages that you know? Well, I first of all, I like to listen to music of different, um, um, in different languages. So I learn a lot of languages from music. And then I like to watch movies from, in other languages. That is what I do. But also, when I was small, I had to learn many languages because I'm an Albanian, so I had to learn Albanian at home. And then uh, if I wanted to travel two hours outside of Kosovo, I mean, two hours from my home, anywhere, that means that I had to go outside of Kosovo because Kosovo is small. So this way, my neighbors knew, I mean, there were a lot of Serbs, and I learned Serbian also from TV. For example, I, I feel myself so bad that I didn't learn Kurdish when I was in, in Turkey. That is one of the things that I, that I regret most. I should have learned that beautiful language. And then uh, I learned Turkish, of course. Uh, I, I was going on summer holidays in, in Bulgaria a lot. So I learned Bulgarian there, but then in Turkey, I met my beautiful wife, and then I learned Bulgarian uh, better. Now I'm hoping to learn, um, now I'm hoping to learn French uh, and Spanish, and hopefully, I'm, I'm, I mean, ho hopefully I can learn Arabic sometimes too. Was hard getting used to everything while traveling? Of course. Life is not, is not um, easy. Life is hard. But I love traveling and I love learning new, new places. That was very difficult for me as well because so I was born and raised during a war, which means that during that time we were very conservative, you know, because it's a war time. So you are like, oh, you are Albanian, this and that. And then, of course, my, my, my family was Muslim. So we are not, my family was not very practicing Muslim. I became more practicing Muslim when I went to Turkey. But 
Um, nevertheless, you know, we had this thing, you know, who we are and stuff like that. So it was difficult for me to learn from other cultures and, and be comfortable. But I loved it. And then I never stopped. It was difficult for me to try different food. But I love now different food. I love Mexican food. I love some of the Thai food. Not, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm a foodie guy, but, you know, these kind of things. Um, and then one of the most, one of the most important experiences that, that like grew me was when I was in Turkey. So I studied at Fatih University, which had the most diverse population of every university, of any university in Turkey. We had students from 105 um, countries of the world. So my four year uh, friend in, in the dorm, in the same room, was Ahmed Aliu, who came from Nigeria. So this way I knew, um, I know a lot about Nigeria, I know about their language, I know about their cuisine. I even, you know, I mean, his parents have sent me Nigerian clothes, which I wear with a lot of pride. Fortunately, Ahmed is now in D.C. He's a professional, he works at the World Bank, and we are still very good friends, uh, very good friends. And then... Actually, we established Washington Institute for Leadership together with Ahmed. Is there no advantage of nationalism? Then there are there a lot of people supporting it. There's a quote from saying, you know who I am? I'm a nationalist. And there's a quote from Theresa, Theresa May. If you believe you are a citizen of the world, you are a citizen of nowhere. Well, I definitely don't agree with that political um, ideology. I think that I'm a citizen of the world. I have left Kosovo when I was 14 years old to go to England uh, as a refugee. And then I came back uh, in 15 and then I stayed four more years there. In 2004, I went to Turkey. Now I came to America. Can you tell me now that I'm the most Albanian guy ever? No. I have these features from a Nigerian Ahmed, from Cambodian Rotana, from my wife, B Bulgarian background, from Turkey, from, uh, of course, from my family, my Albanian family, and I feel proud of all of those kinds of things. And I feel proud to say that I'm not a nationalist. I am a patriot, however. If there is something that needs to be done for Kosovo, Kosovo is a young country. For my people, I am there. I'll be happy to do my part. Most of the things that, the most important thing that my country right now needs is support, from around the world, which I'm trying to, to make everyone aware of my country. At the same time, they need peace. This is why I work, I write, I give lectures to people on peace and also how to reach peace in Kosovo and in the Balkans. Was it hard getting used to everything while traveling? Yes, it was. How did you get used to traveling and getting used to everything? Well, I, I just, I, I mean, I, you know, that is one of the things. Uh, that I talked about is I love traveling. There was a, so two years of my life, 2014, 2015, I didn't stay at home for two weeks straight. So for two years, I didn't stay at home for, there was no time that I stayed for two weeks straight at home. I was always traveling most of the time out of America, but also inside of America. And I liked it because uh, I like to try new stuff. Fortunately, my wife, uh, she also likes it. And she supports me. So most of the traveling we used to do together. We worked together at Washington Institute for Leadership. We did together uh, Istanbul Leadership Institute, lobbying school, NAPAC. So everything, you know, she is, uh, she's supporting me. And she's smart enough to run all those organizations. She, she run Istanbul Leadership Institute for her own, uh, on her own. So sometimes it was her work that made us travel. Sometimes it was my work that made us travel and stuff like that. Right, Rana? I think I answered your question. Thank you for your time. I have to leave, all right? Yes? Thank you. I asked this question because I consider myself a strong patriot and I'm looking forward to having a political career in my home country, not Turkey. Well, you know, Abdulaziz Almat, wherever you are, please feel free to have a political, um, a political uh, career. Politics is, is good. I like politics. I love politics, but I love to study politics. I'm, I'm not, not a, a political. Uh, I'm not a politician yet. I would also consider being a, a politician in 
even in, in America or in, in Kosovo, but that is not my purpose right now and that is not my cause. If according to my values, it will need, my cause will need me to be a politician, I will happily do that. But for now, I think that I better serve people that I love, values that I, that I love as an academic or as a founder or, or as a social entrepreneur of these organizations. Uh, your favorite, off topic, your favorite five music, uh, uh, favorite music artist. One, uh, Jay-Z. Uh, two, uh, Queen. Um, I don't know if, if you guys, I mean, you are young, so I don't know who you, if you guys know who Queen is. Uh, a Queen, uh, Freddie Mercury, so it was a group. And then third, uh, uh, who is third? My favorite. Uh, maybe uh, Carl Cox. Carl Cox is a uh, it's house music guy. Uh, who else? I listen a lot to, to, to music of, of different countries. So I, let's say, let me just, not, not necessarily they're not my, my favorite, but let's say, for example, I love Zeki Muren. I love uh, Kaya Han. I love Bülent uh, uh, Ersoy. Uh, who else? I love Taoman, uh, a rock. I love, um, there is a, um, a Yugoslavian, a, a Serbian uh, group called Bielo Dugme. I listen to them. I love Jurmat in Albanian. So I have different tastes. Türkiye'deki akademik çevresiyle görüşmeye devam ediyor musun Ali Murat Yel? Yoksa bu sefer etkiledi mi relationship? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, he was a, yeah, one of my professors. Yeah, I... I, I I don't think I'm meeting with, I'm not talking about. Also, even before that, I wasn't really talked to you, uh, to, to, to him a lot recently with didn't have good relation, but yeah, in relationships in there are a little bit weird. Please say Kanye, no Selman. I don't like Kanye. I mean, I don't listen to him. Damn, that was the exact opposite of Kanye. Yes, I don't listen to Kanye West a lot. <laughs> I used to listen a lot to Eminem, but... Um, I haven't listened to him recently. I listen a lot to, let's say, Beatles, Bee Gees. For example, Timberland. Uh, he's a, one of my favorite producers. Jazza, I love Jazza. Frank Sinatra, I love Frank Sinatra. Of course I love Frank, uh, Frank Sinatra. I, I listen to Frank Sinatra a lot. Um, uh, ben Ferro, no, I don't listen to Ben Ferro, unfortunately. Anyway, what do you have to say about the view of patriotism of first-generation parents versus second generation? For example, if they expect their children to get an education in America but move to Turkey after. Well, that's some... Uh, uh, that's some... Uh, that's some... Um, you know, that, that's a topic that you have to take it with your, uh, with your parents. Um, I personally am not uh, so, for example, people ask me, what will your kids be? The only thing that I want to give my kids is, I want my wife to teach them Bulgarian. I want them to learn um, English. I want I to teach them Albanian. Uh, and I want me and, me and my wife, because we both know uh, Turkish, to teach them Turkish, and then they to learn other languages. Also, I want to give them the idea of being open-minded, critical thinking, analytical thinking. Right. If my parents expected me to go to live in Kosovo afterwards, but then they saw that that is not who I have become. I have become someone else. I have become someone who, who goes beyond Kosovo. I have become someone that doesn't be like, for example, people tell me, oh, you know, politicians in Kosovo. And guys, for example, I'm in political science. I, I didn't really meet a lot of politicians in Kosovo, although it's much easier. I've met President Obama. I've uh, I've met with um, Secretary Clinton, Secretary Colin Powell, Secretary Merlin Albright. I met Joschka Fischer, German uh, Chancellor. A lot of world leaders, all of Turkish leaders. But I have, I didn't really talk too much with my like people from uh, politicians from from my country. Why? Because. I just didn't have an opportunity to do that. So my parents saw that, you know, this is who Erdogan is hanging out with now, and this is who Erdogan is. So they have seen that I have become my own man. And, you know, parents, although they might have the idea of going back to Turkey and everything, I, I hope that's because of patriotism, not nationalism. 
but uh, at, at the end of the day, they want you to become to be happy and to become good people. If you show that that is, if you show that uh, that is um, who you are, that you are good people, that you know this is where you live and this is where you are going to be a better person, then I'm sure that is what they will want for for you. I'm I'm sure that there is no no parent that uh, will think, oh, if you are a good human being, good person, doing good for yourself and for your community in America, you need to go to Turkey just because of that. Or if you think that that is your idea to go to Turkey, well, yes, maybe. You want to go there, feel free when things get better, of course. But the thing is, I will be very sad if you bind yourself to that. If you're like, okay, all my life is bounded to, oh, I'm Turkish. Okay, if you watch Turkish TV, if you watch Turkish movie, if you listen only to Jaza, you want to listen to Jaza, then also listen to Jay-Z. Kanye, maybe Salman, but